Good morning. Well, hello, One Life America. It's conference call time, and the March Madness contest is tipped off. I uh, want to let you all know that your lines are muted, and we'll stay muted to the question and answer portion of today's phone call. Obviously, the purpose of our call is to, to get a few minutes in front of each other on Monday mornings before our weeks get into full swing and say hello, uh, get you caught up to date, and all kind of great stuff like that. Um, been doing some reminiscing lately and wanted to uh, share a devotion with you this morning. Uh, something that you might not know about me is that I have a love for music. Matter of fact, I consider myself a musician. Um, most of my family are musically inclined. My grandfather directed a small church choir for 45 years, and I directed that same choir for 15 years after that. He taught me to know the story behind many of the hymns that I sung as a child growing up. And one of my favorite, one of his favorite hymns was His Eyes on the Sparrow. It's one of mine as well because of the inspiration behind the song. This song was written by Sevilla Durfee Martin, a Canadian-born musician teacher, music teacher who married an evangelist, uh, Dr. Walter Martin, and gave up her teaching to travel with him. In the spring of 1905, while in New York City, Sevilla and her husband were visiting a couple, the Doolittles, who had an amazing outlook and were true saints of, the, of God, despite the fact that Mrs. Doolittle was bedridden and Mr. Do, Doolittle was an incurable cripple. The Doolittles were asked the secret of their happiness and hopefulness. Mr. Doolittle's answer was, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Most people have a hobby of some sort to provide a healthy diversion from the rigors of work, mine or family time and music and hunting. Long ago, there was a woodworker in Nazareth who counted bird watching among his diversions. We can make that assumption because Jesus later referred frequently to bird life in his sermons. In Matthew 10:29, Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will. Matthew 6.26, Jesus said, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father needs them. Are you not of more value than they? Luke 12.6, Consider the ravens. And Jesus said in Luke 12.7, Indeed, the very hairs of your head are outnumbered, are, are numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I won't break into song this morning, but I do want to read the first and last verse to his eyes on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw me closer to him. For he, from care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, for I know he watches me. Regardless of our current situation, whether it be challenges and trials, or happiness and success. Our Heavenly Father is in full control. It is not always easy to remember that, but I hope that sharing with you the inspiration behind the hymn, His Eyes on the Sparrow, will stick this tune in your head and help you remember. Because you should sing because you're happy, and you should sing because you're free. For His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. Short prayer. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the opportunities that you give us. We thank you for watching over us and for having your hand upon us. In great times and in rough times, you're there with us. Amen. I'm going to jump into our production report for the week of 2-9, February the 9th through February the 13th. And as an IMO agency, One Life produced... $536,652 of submitted annual premium. Our agent of the week, Mr. Tyler Reese, with $8,958. Mr. Luzandro Zuniga, 
$8,218 of submitted premium. Keith Johnson, $8,116 of premium. David Kisselak, $8,064. Stephen Thornton, $7,743. Scott Shaddy, $7,451. Christopher Carroll, $7,346 of submitted premium. Mr. Number eight, uh, Rianne Metcalf, $6,871. Number nine, Brandon Miller, $6,625. And rounding out the top ten, Aziz Adidamirin with $6,504 of submitted annual premium. Uh, our March Madness contest did tip, tip off this morning, so I hope that you're ready for the game. It's going to be a two-week contest. Each week stands alone, So, uh, and then there's a top three overall. You can win up to, if you finish with $10,000 plus annual premium in each of the two weeks, that would be $500 per week or $1,000 total. And if you're in the top three, the top three also get in uh, first place, $500, a plaque and an autographed basketball. Second place, $350 additional cash, a plaque and a basketball. Third place, $150, plaque and a ball. And you can start at $3,500 per week of premium all the way up to $10,000 plus, and it ranks all the way up. I've sent the email. If you did not receive that email, feel free to email me or call me. My email address is dhosh, D-H-O-S-C-H, at onelifeamerica.com, and I will get that sent to you. So you have all the rules and regulations and the um, parameters of the contest. I want to plug real quick our, Mar uh, our Academy and Leadership Summit. Uh, both kick off on March the 23rd. We've got about five weeks or so until that, that kicks off, and we're really looking forward to, to both events. Uh, managers uh, and those who have been to an academy, the Leadership Summit is a place to be. Uh, we've got Teddy DiBiase, Jr., and Jody Fuller are going to be here, along with Derek Moore, obviously, and then a host of, of uh, individuals in One Life that are going to give great uh, informational sessions on leadership and management skills and training. So we're excited about that. And in the academy, uh, we're excited about that as well. We're hoping to have 50 to 60 brand-new agents in the academy. You can register for either one of those on the One Life homepage right in the center. There's three large buttons. The center one says Apply. Flanking on the right or left side is academy registration and a leadership registration. So uh, get registered. Uh, don't wait too long. Go ahead and get your seat reserved. I uh, want to make sure that you plug into all of our social media outlets, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Get on our text message communication. You can text OLA to the number 51660 and get our weekly communications, which include broadcast information for this uh, conference call. And do make sure that you and all your folks are jumping on uh, the conference calls as well, as well. Make sure to watch the Derek Moore's Monday Motivational video. I uh, haven't seen it upload yet, but we should have that uploaded sometime this morning prior to lunch, and we'll send an email out about that as well. And go to Derek Moore's web website on the One Life page. It's onelifeamerica.com forward slash Derek Moore. Real quick, I want to Give a shout-out, if you will, to uh, Mr. Hugo Ramos out in California, brand new to the team, uh, as a manager out there under Brother Kevin McGill. And uh, Kevin sent me some information about Hugo that I, I just felt I needed to share. Being brand new, this is a prime example of what it takes to get the job done. Uh, Mr. Ramos drove from San Diego to Sacramento. This all took place last week. That was a 10-hour drive to train on two appointments. The next day, he went with Kevin three more hours north for a 14-hour day. Then he went back north three more hours to train and go home on a 13-hour drive back to San Diego, where he was going to, planning on working Sunday. Um, I got a phone call Saturday afternoon, uh, and someone asked his California number. They asked for, for a lady. Uh, unfortunately, I explained it was wrong wrong number. Uh, about five minutes later, it was Hugo. He was recruiting. And he was recruiting. He accidentally clicked on my phone number at the bottom of the email. And uh, he called back and said he wanted to take time to introduce himself. And I uh, got a few minutes to spend with Hugo on the phone. And we're excited to have Hugo on the team. And one thing that stuck out with me, he said he loves to do this. Uh, he almost does this as fun. He enjoys this, which we all should have that attitude. But for what he does with his, his pertinent time is uh, spend time with his family and read his Bible. So, Hugo, glad to have you on the team. And uh, we look forward to a long great career with One Life. Um, got Wade Parker with us this morning, and Wade's you know, no stranger to anyone on the call, I'm sure. Wade's been around the insurance industry basically all his life. He worked with, uh, in the business as a teenager 
and has been a licensed insurance professional and contracted through One Life as an agent since 1995, May of 1995. Uh, spending years in the field in sales and management, Wade understands the weekly activity of a field producer and a ma manager. Matter of fact, he still goes into the field from time to time to keep in touch with what's going on. That's the lead from the front mentality that helps our company be successful. I've known Wade uh, and the entire Parker family since I was about eight years old. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for Wade and the Parker family, not just as business owners, but as human beings. So we're glad to have Wade. Wade's sitting shoulder to shoulder with me right now. Uh, so glad to have Wade. And I've prepared a few questions that uh, I've heard from some of our agents and managers that they'd love to hear from Wade. Uh, and, and kind of a glimpse back at the history of the company and looking ahead into the future. Um, but uh, if, wait, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll just start with a few questions. Uh, do you sure. have anything you'd like to say to everybody before well, we get started? Well, just thank you all for the opportunity to be on the call. And thank you, David. And it's the feelings are mutual between the Parkers and the Hoshes, I believe. We've been together a long time. So, uh, But thank you. Thank you for the invitation today. Fantastic. Well, wait, if you don't mind, uh, you have been around the insurance business most of your life. Can you tell us some of your first mem memories of your father in the insurance business? Yeah, uh, very at a very young age, I remember many things about it. And as most people know, he got started uh, in the debit business. And um, back then, I recall him taking me to the office on Fridays. Uh, I remember many of the staff members. And when, when he formed Parker & Associates, our, our first company or agency, uh, they came with him. But... Um, I remember the huge book of business that he toted around, toted in the house, uh, going through it. Uh, you know, just uh, saw him go through a lot of things during those days, wondering how uh, somebody could make it in the insurance business on the debit route and uh, long term. And, and, you know, of course, that's where Parker & Associates came from, was that type of uh, training that he received from that. Fantastic. Uh, didn't our didn't our company, as we know it, Parker and Associates now One Life, start from the spare bedroom in your home when you were a kid? Yes, it did. Um, we had a small uh, three bedroom home in the middle of Meridian, which uh, uh, now, of course, is just like a lot of larger cities. It's not not a ideal place to live, um, but it was great coming up. Uh, but it was a three small three bedroom. Uh, house. Uh, of course, I used one bedroom, mom and dad the other, and then the office was in the other room. Uh, and I remember agents such as Alan Bowles, um, Ray Bunyard, uh, people like that coming by during the weekends, turning in business, just sitting around talking. Uh, so, yeah, I remember lots about that. That's awesome. Uh, do you remember the first office that the company had? Uh, yes, it was a, uh, actually, it was an old abandoned house. I believe it was condemned by the city uh, right off of 8th Street, the middle of Meridian. Um, Dad, and uh, at the time, and still is, our pastor, Mike Bowles, I believe, had owned the building and uh, convinced the city to uncondemn the building and let us do a few renovations to make it safe to, to use once again, and, and uh, that's where we started out. Wow, humble beginnings. Do you remember your first job as a teenager with the company? Um, wow, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of jobs I had I have done through the years, probably even before I was a teenager. But uh, a lot of yard work. <laughs> I did a lot of yard work. I think I painted the office a couple times. Uh, into my teen years, once I got a driver's license, I believe I actually even worked for Lead Lead America, which is another corporation that that we uh, work with is our lead company. Uh, and I remember. You know, boxing leads, taking them to the post office, dropping them, uh, using my truck. <laughs> hmm. So I think I've done a little bit of all of it around here. Hmm. As you got your start in the in, into insurance sales, what was it like getting that first set of leads and heading out to serve clients and write insurance policies? Well, of course, it was very exciting. Um, I think I was 19 at the time, uh, so probably – thought I knew a lot more than I did, <laughs> but I worked for a great person, uh, which his name was Perry Sims at the time, uh, and he trained me uh, along with a few others. But uh, So it was very exciting. It was very exciting to see uh, what you know my father actually did for a lot of years, and, and to be able to go out and do it myself was, was uh, 
was a, a a lot of fun really i had a i had a blast doing it when I first started and still do but um you know it's a little different when it's brand new to you mm. so very enjoy, very much enjoyed it uh, when you began managing other agents, what were your biggest challenges well i mean that's that's a huge question uh there 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 are numerous challenges when you're bringing an agent and and recruiting an agent to come into our business, but I think one of the biggest things that I faced. Part of that might be, you know, we're, we live in the southeast and it's a little different here than it is in other areas, but uh, finding an agent that can make it initially in our business before those commissions start to flow. Um, you know, finding a guy, helping a guy make it through those first initial weeks when they're not getting a paycheck. Uh, and, of course, back then, you know, and I think some still do it today, is we split a lot of business with these people when they came home. And uh, that's a big part of it. Splitting business, helping that guy be successful, or, or lady, for, for that matter, can you know, be successful out there by helping their start. That's correct. Absolutely. Um, do you remember what year was our company's top final expense production and what that amount was? You know, I, I think uh, it was somewhere around 2003, something like that, mm-hmm. uh, and it was around $56 million, I believe we did in that year. Fifty-six million 56, of annual premium. Yeah, fifty-six million of premium. That's amazing. Averaging over a million dollars of submitted yes. annual premium a week. That's correct. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, do you remember how many agents we contracted during the Medicare Advantage? Because right after that, mm-hmm. those peak years of success and yep. final expense, we moved into the Medicare Advantage market. That's exactly right. Do you remember how many agents that we contracted in the mid to late two thousands for well, Medicare Advantage? In a, in a short period of time, I think we we contracted between 9,500 and 12,000 agents during that time. Wow! And how many of those were on your immediate sales team? I had I had around uh, 800 850 agents at one point, and that that spanned from uh, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Oregon. That was my main states that I operated in at that time, and I had somewhere between 750 and 800 agents wow. at one given time. Now, in, in moving into the modern era of our company, as One Life started reestablishing our sales force in 2010, we knew it would be a, uh, you know, a struggle rising back to the top of final expenses. There would be some challenges along the way. It wouldn't be easy. What initial changes were made to ensure our success? Um, well, we you know we brought in some some key people for one thing, uh, you know Scotty being one of those. Um, you come into your role now, um, but I think we fixed a lot of internal structure um, to make sure we could support and, and not only support but support the people the way we want to support people um, in every way possible with a great lead program and, and all the other things that we have to offer. So we had to fix ourselves before we could go out and get others. Some reorganization, uh, that's if you That's exactly will. right, reorganization. That's Fantastic. Um, the first week, uh, rededicated final expense sales in 2006, I believe our, excuse me, 2010, I believe our production for, for the average week was under $100,000 of submitted premium. Now, five years later, we've grown to average over a half million. So just in five years, we've, right. we've multiplied that. Is there any uh, anything specific that you can attribute that success to? Well, I, you know, I think there's a lot of things that contribute to that. And, and, you know, we're still having some struggles here and there. We always will as long as we're growing. Um, but I think a great lead program, of course, is, is one thing that has, that has helped us. Uh, uh, we've made huge improvements in that, I've seen. Uh, our systems are so much better than they used to be. Uh, but consistency, I think, is the biggest thing. Uh, continue to do the same thing. The, the the things that have made us successful, you know, continue to do those things. Mm-hmm. Add, you know, new and, and good things to it, but let's keep doing those things and be consistent, mm-hmm. be intentional about what we're doing out there in the field. So. And, and I think it's, it's pretty obvious that the, the – the corporate recruiting and our field managers and agents doing their own recruiting, you know, obviously to grow an organization, you have to have more agents. That's right. Especially yeah. in our business. You have to have more agents on, on board and in production. So that's a huge part, and that's why we spend the amount of money on the corporate side doing the recruiting that's right. uh, that we do. And 2014 saw One Life submit just over $24 million 
in premium. What's the goal for this year, 2015? Well, first off, just seeing that number is uh, is you know wonderful and uh, a long way from where we where we've come from. So congratulations to everybody on the call for that first, because uh, that's just a huge feat. But you know, going forward, we this year we want to hit that 30 million mark. You know, we want to hit that and exceed it even. But um, you know, that's where we want to be. All right. Um, what are the future goals for the company? Well, first, of course, to get back to, to that 50 million mark, you know, to get back and get over that. Uh, I, I think we, you know, we will do that. Um, it'll, it'll take us another couple of years to get there, but uh, that's the initial goal. Let's get over 50 million. Uh, once we reach that, I think we want to go for 100 million, hmm. um, and I, that probably will be the next goal when we hit 50. We're not going to take the baby steps like we have in the past. I think when we hit 50, um, I know Ken Parker, my dad, is going to say, "Let's do 100." Yeah, and that will be the next mark, I do believe. So. And it's almost another level of comfort going for that 50 in the future, in the near future. That's right. Because we have been there. We have done that, exactly. and we know it can be done. Exactly. So, absolutely. That's, that's fantastic. Um, today starts our March Madness contest. What's it going to take for our top producers for this contest to rise to the top? Well, I mean, it, it's fairly obvious. I mean, you look at the numbers in a regular week, and if, if these guys are really going to go after it, and these top guys on this sheet really go after it, it's going to take 10K – a week to get it, I yeah. think. So um, that's going to be the mark. All right. I'm excited to see it. It's always stiff competition yes, it is. here in these contests. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you're here in, in your neck of the woods, wherever you might be, but uh, when you got a few agents or a group of agents in an area, boy, they, they get on each other. That's right. They, they really push each other to excel. So uh, we're excited to see the results. So keep tuned as we'll start sending out, hopefully on Tuesday afternoons or Wednesday mornings, of each week, the following uh, after the, each week's production of where everybody stands. Okay. So, so keep watch for that. Um, we have a couple of big events coming up at the end of March. What encouragement do you have to offer to our managers for the upcoming leadership summit for the next uh, the next month? Well, you know, it's very important to be here. Um, just like when you hire on an agent, in my opinion of it, and the way I did it, I hired friends first. Um, you know, I wanted to have a relationship with my downline people, um, and you want to have a relationship with yours, and we want to, we, to this day, our corporate office wants to have the relationship, you know, with our downline. So we want you to come. We want you to be here. We want you to fellowship with us. Uh, it's very important to be here um, to get the knowledge and to get, you know, there's some great people speaking uh, at this thing. So, you know, it's so important to, to show your face, be here, get to know us, get to know the Parkers, get to know the Hoshes, get to know uh, the Elliots, and, uh, you know, be around us. And, and Wade made a, a key point there, which was, um, you know, a big part of our academies and the leadership summits is the, the education that you can receive and the information that you get. Most corporations charge a premium, a fee for admittance yeah. to that type of training seminar. But we use this in big portion to start building or continue to build relationships with uh, with our people. It's very important for us to get to know folks. And I tell folks this often, that an agent with one life, we don't want them to feel like a writing number and somebody's just watching for their name on the production report. It's a lot more than that. We want them to find a home, to be part of something, be part of the team, because that's what we are is we're a team. When we've tried the softball thing, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> but, but we're really good at finally Smith life insurance, and we want you to be part of the team uh, and join us. Uh, Wade, do you have any closing thoughts for our listeners? Sure. Um, well, first, let's talk about that softball team. I've never mm-hmm. seen a bunch of old men drop like flies as quick as they did. It was tough on <laughs> folks. It was definitely tough. Even some middle-aged folks, it was yeah. tough on us. Yeah, we're, we're middle-aged, but we had I think we had how many players? Uh, 25, 30 players? That was ridiculous. I think everybody sustained some type yeah, of injury. Yeah, we all had yeah. an injury or two. But, you know, guys, and, and mainly speaking to the managers on this is, you know, always think about your people first. Always remember – you know, they're here because of you. They're looking to you for guidance and, and build that relationship with those people. Uh, you know, be their friend, uh, be their leader, and uh, they're looking for that. They want that. They need that. Um, you know, it's just a must uh, for them to hear from you 
on maybe not a daily basis, but a couple times a week. They need to hear from you. Uh, and just as you need, you know, to build that relationship with them, they need that relationship from you as well. So it's very important. And um, looking forward to seeing everyone here that, that's going to make it at the Leadership Summit. Fantastic. We're going to take a few minutes to open the lines. Now, wait, I don't expect a whole lot of people to ask questions. Nobody wants to raise their hand first, but we're going to give everybody an opportunity to ask a question. By hitting star six, you can unmute your line. That's star six to unmute your line if you have a question for Wade. And Jonathan's watching for any unmuted lines. If you're unmuted, just go ahead and start talking. But uh, I do want to take a second to say, you know, I've had an opportunity to, to be around Ken and Wade most of my life, and I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, getting to know Daniel. Uh, and he's a great asset to, to one life and will be for years and years to come. Uh, he's working in the marketing department and uh, bringing some new life uh, to say the least, yeah, uh, to, right. to our operations up here. But, uh, you know, Wade and Ken have always led from the front, and I can see the same attributes in, uh, in Daniel and myself. Wade, I don't see anybody. Line. We're going to give about 15 more seconds for anybody to unmute their line and ask a question at star six to unmute your line. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Could you all go through some basic training uh, for America, for instance, I know that you all have done the A through Z training sessions. I appreciate it. But for some reason, I haven't been able to uh, connect with it. And maybe it's because I'm a new agent and I had a tough time trying to figure out the time zone. But I really would appreciate that type of training. Could someone just kind of briefly go over that on Monday? Um, Break that into your sessions. Is that possible? Uh, absolutely. We About once a month we have a training session. Uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to, and Stephen Wade for jumping in there, but, uh, I, I've headed up the LMS or our online e-learning site. If you had an opportunity to visit the One Life University at learning.onelifeamerica.com? No. Okay. That's a great place to start, and Alan Bowles does a phenomenal job of training. Uh, there's some real good reading literature on there, but uh, absolutely, I'm making a note of that now. And uh, okay. we'll have a training session here in the very near future just to cover some products. Fantastic. Now, last question. Do you have the previous training sessions on there? There is some training sessions on there. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And okay. that's on the learning dot, learning dot one life America dot com. You said, say it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? I, I, was, uh, I was exercising, so I'm going to stop exercising and write that website address down. What, give it to me again, please. It is learning dot one life America dot com. That's L E A R N I N G dot one life America dot com. Okay. And my 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 phone number, if you're writing this down, my phone number is eight hundred seven seven four eight zero zero two six. And my extension is one two two nine. Feel free to call me at your convenience after your exercising session and I'll uh <laughs> I'll get you locked in there and walk you right into creating that account. I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for calling in. All right. All right, folks. I think that's the only question we have for today, so we're going to let you off. It's a straight up 11. We don't want to keep you from riding premium during the March Madness contest, so we're going to let you jump back into it. Make sure to tighten up those shoelaces, and don't get be scared to drive to the basket during the contest week. Uh, there's cash money on the line. Thank you, everybody, One Life, and have a fantastic Monday. <laughs>